In this lesson, we'll learn how to begin painting overgrown foliage on the main building in our image. Okay, so at this point in the previous lesson, we had left off by adding sort of this base photographic texture to our main building here. So, you know, we talked earlier about uh, really overgrowing this scene with foliage, making it look like nature's sort of reclaiming this city. Now, we're going to start by bringing in some foliage on the building here. Now, throughout this course, we're going to be both hand painting foliage and we're also going to be bringing in photographic foliage. So, what I've done here on top of our dirt and decay folder, I've created a group and just called it foliage and inside that group I have a couple more groups one for photo based which is empty and one for painted foliage and in this group you can see I have a building foliage layer so uh, that's the layer that we're going to begin working on so let's talk about brushes here we're going to go ahead and grab our brush and if we simply right click on our canvas you'll notice that I've got this brush library loaded with several different brushes that we can use to paint foliage now, if you aren't familiar with making brushes like these, then you might check out Kurt's course, Creating Custom Foliage Brushes for Digital Illustration. In that course, he'll show you how to take uh, various elements and build your own custom foliage brushes. But uh, for the time being, we've got our own brushes here in this library we're going to be using. Now, when it comes to the type of foliage that we want to paint on top of our building here, um, I think of things like ivy that grows up the sides of buildings, and I also feel like the environment or the location that this city is in is going to drastically affect the type of foliage there. If it's a desert, you're going to have much different types of plant life than you would, say, in a swampy area. So um, let's go ahead and, for this course, assume that this city is located in uh, a very wet vicinity or very wet area uh, of, of the, the geographic location it's in. So um, we've got a lot of swampy type plant life. So we're going to have lots of things that sort of dangle off the building, things like vines and uh, just things that clump up as well. So uh, I'm going to come in here and let's just grab a brush here. Um, now we used this leaves to brush earlier and I like this one a lot because it's, it's a really nice brush for uh, just painting nice clumps of leaves. Uh, and in this case, being that this building is so far away, we're not going to see the detail of individual leaves. So um, this is very much like one of these structure brushes that we used earlier down here. These structures one, two, and three, they're just kind of brushes for building uh, a silhouette or a base structure of whatever it is you're painting. So uh, with this particular brush, you can see here that we get sort of a leafy type of a look, sort of like that. But, you know, again, we're not concerned with the actual individual leaves at this distance. So uh, let's go ahead and choose some colors to paint with. Let me go ahead and grab my foreground color, and I'm going to come down here and we'll grab kind of a darker warm green, maybe not quite so saturated. Let me just shrink down my brush here. And let's go ahead and undo that, and I want to choose a little different color here. Looking in terms of value at this point, choosing a shadow color for the, for the uh, foliage. Now, looking also at the areas around, basing this shadow color off the darkest values in the building as it is currently. So this is pretty close. Um, I'm actually going to desaturate it just a little bit more. Let's maybe go with something... Yeah, something like that. Now, I'm going to hit X on my keyboard at this point to switch my background and foreground colors places. And let's go ahead and choose a different color. Let's choose a kind of a highlight color here. Now, I'm not too concerned with choosing um, a lot of different colors to paint this foliage. Again, really what we're more concerned with is the silhouettes of the foliage. So uh, if we come in here and maybe grab a little warmer green. Let's go ahead and just do a test right here. We'll paint some of that. And I'll hit X again, and I'll paint on top of it. That's pretty light in comparison, so I'm going to darken that up a bit. Still a pretty light color, so I'll undo back a few times. Uh, and let's come down a little bit darker. You can zoom out on that if we need to. And that looks pretty good. So uh, let me go ahead and grab my eraser by hitting E. And again, I've got one of those foliage brushes set to the eraser as well. So uh, we'll just go ahead and set it to this same Leaves 2 brush here. And that way we can both paint and erase with this brush. So uh, at this point, we're just going to come in and let's go ahead and grab our darker color first here. 
and I'm just going to make it a little bit larger. Again, you can hold down the Alt and right click and drag to uh, dynamically increase and decrease the size of your brush. And I'm just going to come in and start beginning to quickly paint in kind of some blocky areas of foliage here. So there's not a lot of magic to uh, this particular step. Uh, right now, it doesn't look uh, like we're painting uh, a lot of detail in terms of the foliage, but when it comes down to it, we're going to zoom out, and this is going to end up looking pretty nice. So uh, let's come in here, and if we need to, we can always bring back our mountains uh, just to give some kind of a grounding element so we're not painting against that white background entirely. Now we've got kind of these areas where we've chiseled out. Now we're going to be painting a little bit more in these areas to kind of reflect the depth or the uh, thickness of this particular edge. But I'm actually going to come in here and begin to just kind of bring in some foliage on top of that, like it's overgrowing. All right, so I've painted in a few areas here. Um, we want to make sure these are nice and dark. So uh, really thinking about kind of the silhouette of how these these leaves in this uh, greenery is going to uh, sort of clump up on the building here. So uh, it, if we come in now and we hit our X key, we could come in and maybe just do a little bit of a highlight type color on some of these areas. Still not real happy with that color. I may have gone a little too dark. This brush does have some pressure sensitive uh, uh, dynamics applied to it uh, and that's just to take advantage of the fact that I'm working on a pressure sensitive tablet here. So uh, we're going to come in here let's go ahead and just kind of alternate back and forth depending on the areas that we're painting. This is kind of a, a, a lengthy repetitive process painting uh, this type of greenery on our building here but you can see when we zoom out that stuff's starting to look pretty good uh, so there's a lot of building here to paint now thinking about kind of areas where there might be more of this maybe there's quite a bit down here on top of this flat surface and uh, maybe we have more of the uh, sort of this vegetation that's growing closer to the ground uh, maybe we could even start to intersperse and uh, bring in some of this this uh, what there excuse me this foliage off of the ground itself and have it growing up the walls sort of like that maybe bring some down in this corner maybe there's a big clump right here so right now really we're just kind of starting off uh, by blocking out the shape and thinking of the silhouette that we want that uh, that vegetation to take and then we come in with our lighter color, and where the light source is, uh, we, we think about that, and, and then we place in kind of a, a variation in value here. So uh, again, it doesn't look like much when you're zoomed up close to it, but when you're looking at the image from a distance, it actually starts to look pretty good. So um, it's probably an important thing to think about your light source at this point as well. I don't think we've mentioned that. So I'd like to do really kind of a, a dynamic type of um, almost a twilight type light that's coming in from this, uh, this top left corner. Maybe if we bring in our buildings, which still need a lot of work, we'll work on those in a little bit. Uh, maybe it's coming in and breaking over these buildings right here on the left and just illuminating the building like so. Now, we're not super, super concerned with color at this point. Uh, I know we've chosen two colors here, but uh, we're going to be doing a lot of color correction in the coming lessons. So I'm not too concerned with making sure that my colors are 100% accurate according to what we currently see in our image. I know I'm going to drastically change these colors. So looking at these, maybe we've got some, some hanging vines here. Uh, I'd have some fun with these brushes that I've included in your project files. Come over here and maybe experiment with some of these. Uh, let's see here, where is that brush? I know I have a good brush in here for creating vines. There we go. Just try this leaves one down here at the bottom on the left, and we'll shrink that down. You can kind of see that's a pretty good vine-like brush. So maybe we come in and make that really small and do some hanging type vegetation here. I 
thinking about uh, reference for this, um, if you're not quite sure what type of vegetation grows on buildings, do some research on the internet. Pull up some image searches and find some images that uh, kind of inspire the look that you're going for. Uh, I don't have any that I have the rights to, so I won't be able to include any in your project files, but they're really not hard to find on any search engine, um, whatever your favorite search engine is. Now, also thinking about kind of these this big spanse of space that is this wall of this building. It's really got minimal surfaces that plant life would cling to, but um, we could come in and begin to layer in some of this uh, this plant life, uh, maybe at the, the window sills here, and uh, maybe even having it growing in from the corner here, it, it would start to kind of creep and cling to kind of this white this white ridge right here. So maybe the underside of that ridge has some plant life on it. Just kind of always zooming in and out, checking and seeing what it looks like from a distance. Now, uh, the one problem with this is, is we're adding these these masses to our building, and we, we haven't considered kind of the light source and the shadows that these these masses are going to create. So I tell you what, uh, like I said, this is a, a fairly repetitive process in covering our building with foliage. I'm gonna really hit this pretty hard using the exact same techniques that we've talked about in this lesson. In between lessons, I want you to do the exact same thing. Feel free to paint your building with as much foliage as you'd like. When you come back in the next lesson, we're going to make another pass of dirt and decay and even some damage on this building. So uh, we'll get started with that in the next lesson.